The Sandy and Todd Cast is a Mind Garden Media podcast in association with Screw You Todd Productions. Sandy and Todd Cast, we are down to the final one for season two. This is episode 16, and it's another one of our intuitive card readers. Yes, Todd, we are catching up with Eric. Ferdinand Backlit, one of our amazing intuitive tarot card readers, and he gave us yet another great evening not too long ago that we want to share with all of our audio cast listeners. He was our very first reader and has been a, a helper on this show and an inspiration on this show, and so we're very glad to feature him this week. Season 2, Episode 16, catching up with Eric on the way next on the Sandy and Todd cast. Feeling a bit lost? Not sure what's holding you back? A transformational tarot session with Eclectic Path Wellness can provide the guidance you need. Combining tarot and coaching to help you understand and navigate the changes you may face. Heal, empower, and clarify your path. Connect with us on Facebook at Eclectic Path Wellness. Broadcasting from two very different yet magical places not found on any map. Get ready to discuss the strange, weird, ghostly, crazy, spooky, and odd things that take place around us each and every day. All while having a little bit of fun. This is the Sandy and Todd cast. Final episode of season two. It's been a great season. It's been a wild season. It's been a ride that I can't even explain, Sandy. I I just don't. I can't believe that it went this fast. We had so much fun in season two. The last episode this week, we're going to take a couple weeks off. But alas, you'll also get a couple of bonus episodes in between. I know in between this episode and the beginning of season three. We're going to kick season three off with a bang. We'll have a guest named Holly Hughes with us, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that in the coming weeks. But uh, yeah, it's really exciting that we got through two full seasons so far. Kind of amazing. And this season was, uh, the first season seemed to be uh, relatively easy. This one, um, along the way, it evolved and changed uh, because we wanted it to, evolved and changed because we had to. And uh, it was not the easiest season to get through. I thought like the first season seemed easier. The second season seemed like a mountain to try and climb. I know it was really strange. Well, we just had a lot of stuff going on, you know, I mean, it's been a pretty wild last few months. I I have to admit, and lots of stuff going on in my life, in your life, sort of trying to figure out what we were doing with the live cast that we do and how were we going to move forward. But, you know, in the end, we did it. And I hope everybody enjoyed the best of season one episode that we gave you here in season two. That was a lot of fun to go back through. And, you know, we're kind of funny, Todd. We really are. Well, not necessarily funny, like ha ha funny, but more like bad cheese funny, like it goes bad kind of thing. You know, we're kind of cheesy. Definitely not kind of. We are cheesy, but it was a lot of fun. Season one. We were so excited and it just carried through the whole season. Season two, we got a little more serious, took a deeper dive into the woo-woo world, the paranormal world, talked to some amazing guests, listened to some master classes from some of our unbelievable tarot readers. The intuitive family that we have grown in the past several months has just been so supportive and so wonderful to us. Yeah. And these are people who uh, said, yes, we'll help you out. Yes, we'll be involved with what you got going on. And it was more than just involvement. It was very supportive. Uh, Eric was one of those guys right out of the gate. He said, I'll be on whenever you want me to be on. Yeah. And um, and if you remember the very first time he this is so weird about our intuitive readers. But the first time we had him on, we got into our little uh, software where there's kind of like a back room area where people stand by before we bring them on to where everybody can see. Mm -hmm. And you had not arrived yet, but we he came into the room and there was no photo and there was no video. And I'm like, well, what's going on with your video? He goes, oh, I. I need to go on my wireless or something. I'll be right back. And then he came back in 
And then later on, we found out the reason why he didn't uh, have his camera on was because he didn't have any clothes on. And so, I, <laughs> you know, it's like, OK, so uh, like uh, Aaron, uh, the, Zeke at the time uh, doesn't wear clothes or doesn't uh, show up uh, or he's in the shower when yeah. he's supposed to be. I was just, how does this happen? We never had this happen with the ladies. No. Um, <laughs> Asudi's never done this to us. And, and Victoria's never done this to us. And Holly's never done this to us. No. It's just the men who seem like they've got to be naked all the time. <laughs> don't know where that stems from but you're right i never thought about it until you just brought it up but it's true they they have to be naked a lot what does that say about our male intuitive tarot readers are well, all intuitive tar- tarot readers who are male are they like that i don't know and uh <laughs> and now you know you know aaron is uh is uh his pronouns are different so he doesn't necessarily uh side with the male side of things uh, he goes with them and they and all that kind of stuff so maybe that's changed maybe he's wearing cl- uh maybe they're wearing clothes more often maybe i don't they know are. maybe they are you know i had a really quick zoom sort of meeting with them the other night they were wearing clothes they were walking the dog so who knows I have no idea, but we'll see in season three. Apparently we will see. I guess we will. Uh, And I think what we should do is we should uh, keep a chart on the show of of who's wearing clothes and who's not wearing clothes. (laughs) I love that. And you know what? I can just see Eric getting really embarrassed when we pull out the chart. I can't wait. Let's do it. That would be great. Good idea, Todd. Anything to embarrass him. I know. But yeah, we, we had an interesting season, too. And, and I think that, um, you know, there's so much in life that goes on that you have no control over. Mm-hmm. And you get into the you get into a rut where you feel like you're scheduling it. You've got it running the way you think it's going to run. Mm-hmm. And then it takes a completely weird turn. And it not only messes you up personally, but it messes people in your life up, too, yeah. because they're not expecting it either. And it not only does it affect you, but it infects, uh, affects, uh, infects them. It affects them <laughs> just as much. And we went through that this, uh, this, this season and yeah. uh, it was kind of a, a learning experience. And I'm not sure that, that, um, that teaching moment is quite done. Cause as far as I'm concerned, I'm not out of the woods yet. And I have not come to the conclusion of what I've got going on. So we'll just have to see how things uh, turn out for the next season. Yeah. Season it's three. Funny because, it, you you use the words I was going to use, learning experience. It has been a huge learning experience, not only about ourselves, not only about our lives, but each other's lives, learning about each other more. You know, we're always evolving as, as you know, you laugh at me, but as BFFs, we're always evolving. We're going to have ups and downs. We're going to learn more and more. And it's, I, I feel like it's brought us closer, not just life in general, but this podcast has really brought us closer because we're learning how to really work with each other. It's not easy to people think that technology makes things so much easier, but it's not easy living states apart and not being able to be across the table from each other and know 24 seven what's going on in each other's lives and understanding what's going on. And it sort of opened up our, our methods of communication with each other so that we are adapting to this situation that we're in. And so it has been a huge learning experience. And I think we are, I think you're right. I think we are continuing to learn. I think season three, just from what we're talking about today, I think to me, season three is going to be, it's going to end up being a little bit of season two, a lot of season one, because we're in, we really enjoyed what season one was as well. And then, sort of taking those two and putting them together for season three. So well, it's going to be really interesting. Season two was an experimental season because yeah. we really weren't sure what we were going to do. We started off with it and, and it evolved like yeah. it should. Yeah. And I think we figured out somewhat of the recipe. And I, one of the things we used to do, um, we used to play match game on, yeah. on the, on the live cast, which was always a lot of fun. Yeah. But I always refer to to Match Game. It was a, if you don't know what Match Game was, it was a wildly popular game show between 1973 and about 1980. And then mm-hmm. there were some reincarnations of it, and it's on right now in a different uh, form. But it, none of those versions ever had the magic of that original show. Agree. 
And if you watch the early versions of match games, 73, 74, 75, some of them are a little off. They're not quite as good. And, and here's the reason. Because when producers got guests on the show, they finally realized there was a method to where they placed people on the panel. Right. And it took them th- almost two, three years before they figured out that exact uh, method what the formula was, and then they just copied it every week. But the upper left-hand corner was usually a comic who was really hot at the time, maybe on yep. a TV show, um, maybe not a very uh, uh, smart person, not necessarily the best game player, but uh, people loved it. That was number one. Number two was always Brett Summer. She was there every week. Mm-hmm. Charles Nelson Riley was there. And when he wasn't, it was Gary Berghoff from MASH who sat in, in that position. Lower left-hand corner was always the dumb one. It was always somebody who was not very smart, always gave really bad answers, but they looked really nice. And it was always a female. Richard Dawson in the lower middle. And then on the on the on the on the bottom right was one of a a couple people. Betty White, Marsha Wallace, uh, Fanny Flagg was in Ah. there. Patty Deutsch was there once in a while. But it was always somebody who had the last line. And by the way. That last seat was always my favorite seat. Yes. They because were fantastic. Fanny they didn't, they, they, yeah, they didn't always match, but their answers were smart and funny. And, and <laughs> yes. they they were like the punchline of the whole thing. Exactly. So once they figured that out, it was this huge hit. And as soon as you lost Richard Dawson, things changed. And as soon you know, that things it's like true. that really made a big difference on the show. But. I digress with that and just say that we evolved over the season. We kind of found a happy spot for not only our listeners and our viewers, but also for us. We have to be happy in this. We have to be enjoying it. And I think a little bit of one, a little bit of two and something new for three. And we're going to have a nice season coming up in season three. I'm really looking forward to it. And yeah, you are so right. And I'm a big podcast listener. I love the true crime podcast, the paranormal podcast the uh, reincarnation podcast. And one thing I've noticed is this recurring theme over longstanding podcasts is from season to season or from, you know, group of episodes to group of episodes over time, they do evolve and they all change and they all might, you know, move something around, take something away, add something back in. But it happens with most podcasts that are long lasting is that they learn how to evolve and change with the audience, with their own preferences and and what they enjoy doing. So I'm really looking forward to the next season. I think we're going to have a really good fun one. We also talked uh, kind of came up today and I've been thinking this for a while, but last week uh, we did a live cast and you talked about a uh, cemetery, uh, Peterborough cemetery. Mm hmm. You really got into it. And I and I said, as soon as we were done, I told you, wow, that was incredible. You did a really nice job on it. There was a lot of research involved. You provided a lot of pictures. There was conversation about it. it was just really, really good. And I thought, you know what? You need to you need to bounce that out a little bit. You need to do more of that, whether it's a separate podcast or if it's a um, a bonus episode thing on our podcast mm-hmm. where it's still the Sandy and Todd cast, but it's, you know, Sandy cemetery stories or whatever it is yeah. um, and let you do that. And cause you do it really, really well. And I think there's a big audience for that. I think to be honest with you, I think you could be a star with that. Well, so. first of all, thank you. And you know, I love you. And second of all, it's funny. I, I think that's um, an amazing idea because it's something I'm so passionate about Todd. I'm so passionate about local and regional history, U.S. history, especially the Civil War era, the 1800s. I'm the kind of person that loves walking in the footsteps, literally, of history. And wherever I go, I'm always looking for historic places that I can go and experience things. And especially having abilities, being an empath and having some psychic abilities, it, it just sort of like makes it times 10 for me and even more personal. So uh, as an example, just over the weekend, Dave and I, my husband, Dave and I are very much into geocaching. And OK, we, I got to stop you. Are you both <laughs> into it or is he just doing it? <laughs> no, he actually enjoys it, too. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you. I hate you. I'll tell you why, though, because. It's not just a game. 
it's also a way to explore new places yeah. and learn new things. And that's what we love to do in our spare time. We'll just take random drives anywhere. We'll pick a direction and we'll just go in that direction. And where we end up, we found beautiful waterfalls by mistake. We found all kinds of places. So geocaching allows us to explore a little bit more. Um, this how, do you know, how do you know that you're going to go to a location where there's there's things that you can geocache or whatever it's called? Well, most of them are there's coordinates for them. And really quick lesson on geocaching. It's a game. It's sort of like a treasure hunt. And it's started in the year 2000. And it's so it's been going on for 21 years now. And it's huge. There's millions and millions of geocaches all over the world. People all over the world play it. And what you do is if you want to place a geocache in a specific spot, like a cemetery or a waterfall or a park, a state park, anything that could be um, a good hiding place for something, you, you would place it and you would log the coordinates of it and then you can make it there's an app a geocaching app and you can actually make it what they call a geocache and you can talk about it you can give the history of the place that you placed it you can give little hints and people can go and use gps on their phone and navigate to the place it's it's not easy there's all different levels of terrain um difficulty finding it difficulty that you can set your app to and some are on nature trails. So you get to explore nature trails and it's just this amazing, fun treasure hunt type of game. You can leave little things called swag, little, uh, we have smiley face erasers that we leave in the little containers and you can grab one in exchange and different ways of moving things around. And it's so much fun. And we just started so it a couple months ago. It kind of reminds, and, and we started it, I'm sure, because you found the devil book in the tree, right? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was, we were at a, I didn't know. I had heard of geocaching, but I had never learned anything about it. I didn't know. So a couple months ago, the famous um, call to you where I was crying because I was in an old a cemetery from the 17, 1800s and in the corner of a tree, I found this little container and it literally had a little skeleton in a coffin on the top of the book. And I didn't know what it was. So I panicked and I thought, oh, my God, somebody's, you know, practicing devil worshiping. So I called you and I was all freaked out. Well, lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, I got the nerve to go back and check it out, realized that it was a geocache. And that was, that's what sort of got this fun passion for geocaching going. And now we're up to 22 or 23 finds so far. And it's allowed us to go all kinds of places we never would have gone. It kind of reminds me of like a less modern day version of um, Pokemon Go kind of thing where you have a little bit of technology in this case, but, but you're finding real things in an actual, you know, location. Yes. So. yes. And it's funny you say that because I had mentioned that to Dave just a couple of weeks ago when we were driving around that we had very, very briefly, I'm talking maybe a week or two, tried to play Pokemon Go a few years ago, a handful of years ago, and it didn't last very long because I thought it was kind of boring and weird. Well, it, it the Pokemon Go really didn't last very long. I know you can no. still play it, but do you remember you'd like look outside and there'd be people walking outside playing it? And you're like, oh yeah. my God, it, it was like zombies walking around at the yeah, time. Yeah, we were down, I'm sure everybody's heard of Colgate College. It's an Ivy League college in Hamilton, New York, which is not far from where we camp. And we'd go into town and we'd try playing it. And and we weren't the only ones looking weird, looking down at our phone, walking around. And but it it just didn't last for me. This I feel it will last for me. There's somebody that I saw on Reddit in the geocaching group that actually in thread that actually has been doing it for 17 years. It's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. So we were out geocaching yesterday. It was a gorgeous day here in central New York. And. We happened upon a cemetery that we were actually going to another cemetery and we happened upon this cemetery and ended up exploring it a little bit. And I used Find a Grave to trace the history, the ancestry of one of the graves there. And it went all the way back to the 1600s in Ireland 
it was the uh, deceased who was buried at the cemetery, the Amos Parker Cemetery in the town of Augusta in Oneida County in New York. It was like their great, 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 great grandfather. Uh, The family emigrated to Connecticut in the early 1700s and ended it up and this this deacon who had passed, Robert Jerky, ended up in this cemetery in central New York state. But it went all the way back to and I actually got to read the story. He was a knight. He died in battle. He was only 40 years old, the whole thing. And it's just amazing. And so I think you're right. I think that it would be really cool for me to be able to do some of this historical research and present it to people with, you know, a little bit more of a personal touch, not just this is the grandfather, this is the great grandfather, but really give stories about these people and help them come to life because we can learn so much just by looking at one single grave in a cemetery. Imagine what we can learn by paying attention to all of it. Well, I know what's what's really funny too is like you're sitting there. He was a knight and he died in battle. And I'm thinking, you know, people will look back on us. They were podcasters and they died from brain aneurysms, <laughs> know. you know, or, or you know, heart disease know. or you know, know, diabetes or whatever it is. I so, know, right? So yeah. yeah, I so I think I think the cool idea at first would probably be I can do some bonus episodes. Okay. And we'll do some bonus episodes and we'll see if we can grow it even bigger with time. Just like this one. This one started out just me trying to do something by myself and last year. And I said, hey, Todd, why don't you do this with me? I think it would be fun. And look where we are now. So <laughs> look where we are now. We're going back to a <laughs> podcast with only her. So, yeah, I that's know. what uh, season three holds. And, and there's a lot more stuff coming and we will fill you in as we move along. But yeah. right now it's time to get our Final episode of the season done for you and get it started. Season two, episode 16, catching up with Eric on the Sandy and Todd cast. Eric Ferdinand back with. Let's bring him on right now. Hey, Eric. Happy to be back. <laughs> Thank you. Glad for to have you back. back. It's all my fault, apparently. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you were on Sandy when he was showing you his big microphone because oh. he showed us what the Eric, microphone you got, looked like. You showed Todd your big microphone and I didn't get to see it. Oh, That's come correct. On. Why am I on the spot again? What's up with it? <laughs> That's what happens when you come on the show. You you know, oh we just decided to go in into it really uh, much quicker this week. Much quicker. Usually we wait yeah, till we the didn't end. Yeah, we into our teasing. <laughs> oh God, yeah, it's too early for this, folks. <laughs> but first how you of all, been? Congratulations, Todd. Welcome back to the corporate world. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm sharing your enthusiasm. I know how it feels. I'm I'm stuck in corporate too. So, yep, I totally get you. Well, and there's a part of me, I, I, there's a part of me that really likes the corporate world because things are very structured. And for the most part, you know, how certain people are treated is pretty much the same across the board, mm-hmm. kind of. I like that structure. Um, and so I'm a little excited about that. I, you know, like I said, I could retire next week and I would be really happy in life, but I don't think that'll ever happen for me. So you never know, never know, <laughs> never know. Yes. manifest. Where's my, where's my wand? Go. I'll do there some little doohickeys in the air. So what's new with you? If I make that wish and it comes true in your life, then you better be prepared for it. Be careful for what you wish for, Todd. Remember. Yeah, but I, you know, I don't want to like become maimed or something. And no. I, can't, you know, I, I lose part of my face and I can't do any work, you know, so don't maim me just so I get time off. I mean, off. you might win the lottery or something or, right? Listen, if that happened, you would get so I much know. of that money. I take care of everybody in my life. Sandy would get a little bit for her dog. A little bit. And then I, I would I'd be totally gone. So fast Listen, you'd never see I'm me just again. excited he's gonna go to the Fonzie statue with me in Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised he agreed to that. <laughs> can always change, girl. Can always change. What's new with you, Eric? So far, well, you and I talked about a little bit of um what's happening in my work life. I need your prayers, everyone who knows I might get bumped two levels higher. That's that's a possibility. Wow. Let's see. Still in the interview. I'm still in the interview process. If things go well, yay me. Yay. So let's see. Um, other pieces would mean um, I was very interested in what you said, Todd, earlier about um, being overworked. And it's the things that actually statistically kill people would be 
um, stress related or stress induced work. I mean, well, work that's induced by stress that's induced by work. Wow, I'm getting dyslexic. <laughs> so wow, that's, okay. so that's that's a thing. So stress is a num is a number one enemy. But the thing is, let's bear in mind that stress. Um, is triggered when we allow it to trigger us. So again, um, the time, the first time that you guys invited me here is when I said your attitude determines your altitude. So it depends. Set the tone, start the day right, end it right. I mean, honest, honest to goodness, I'm confessing to the world that I have a super micromanaging boss. She is going to literally watch your every move and watch every single email that you send out to make sure that it's her way and else is the highway. That's my life at work. That's like super duper corporate level type of thing. But I don't let that affect me. So it kind of leads to the point where in, I have two things that I'd like to share with everyone. Um, are you always looking after your mental health? Are you always looking after your emotional health? And the second piece to that is, since this is Tarot Tuesday, how do you choose the right tarot reader for you? What kind of tarot reader would really fit your, you know, your dynamic? Um, so before we proceed with that, I mean, do you, do you guys have any ideas on your side? Do you feel that, I mean, you mentioned something about stress, Todd, and you want to retire super early. And mm -hmm. Andy, you had prior to this section, uh, prior to this live, we discussed a little bit about your dreams and I kind of speculated it might have been anxiety related people that's, within your waking world. So what are your thoughts so far on, on these two pieces before we proceed? Wow, wow, you beautiful souls. I'm so excited to have this platform where I can share my gifts, the things that I do, what we need to do as a collective energy to really step into soul's path. Uh, Reiki and healing and alignment. Oh my goodness, these are all so very important in what we do. Um, I have a daily podcast that I do. You can find me on Spotify and Anchor for your daily vibes, your energies as a collective unit, right? Uh, you can also find me on my Facebook page where I really go more in depth with it but you can find me at mystic karma by victoria the two pieces i want to mention first off is i, I you know i kind of know your work situation mm -hmm. and um i wish i was as strong as you to go into each day feeling this <laughs> and then coming out of the, coming out of the day feeling like this because most days i go into the world feeling like this which as you know is shooting fire from my hands mm -hmm. and i usually end the day shooting fire from my hands and other orifices <laughs> so um i mean I, I wish I could do that. And I do try to meditate and I, I try to stay po as positive as possible. It's been hard, but I, I just saying, you know, hats off to you because you do. And I know you've got a lot going on and yet you always reach out and say good morning and how you doing and how's, you know, your job going and all that kind of stuff. For me, when it comes to readers, it ch for me, it changes because mm -hmm. sometimes it, it, like when I work with you, I need that healing. I need that understanding. I need somebody to listen and give me feedback in that way and in and, and a calming presence. And sometimes, you know, I, I sometimes I may need something else. But for me, typically when I'm looking for a reading, I'm really looking for some guidance and some some understanding from where I'm coming from. So that's yeah, my Ted, point. I'm sort of like you, as I was saying before we went live tonight, this whole past year for me has been really and I truly believe that there are no chances in life. I believe that we're given options and we take our path that we're meant to take. Um, mm -hmm. And I just found out that I was an empath about maybe two, two and a half years ago. I realized that I was and didn't really know what it was. And I've sort of started, I started my journey to maybe understand myself more. But in this past year mm -hmm. is when I really started to go through a transition. So I hmm. started to learn more about myself because what do you do when you're so isolated? You you reflect and you learn and you learn about yourself more. And so I've been in this real transition period for the last year of taking my gifts and taking my abilities mm -hmm. and taking my life in general and making sense of everything that's or trying to make sense of everything that's been put before me. And how do I work it into my life and how do I manage it? And how do I make it work for me to come out on the other side in a good place? And so um, 
I've become much more spiritual. I've learned more. I have a lot. I owe a lot to Todd, but I owe a lot to all of you guys. And the, no, mostly to me, <laughs> uh, because I'm the one that's got to deal oh, with that. Oh, like I don't have right to there. deal with that crazy. <laughs> whoop, that crazy over there. <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> over here. Ah, I can't do it. So, um, but we deal with each other's crazy, but I do owe some of it to him. And I, I owe a lot of it to this podcast because without meeting all of you, I wouldn't have been able to get as far as I have and learn as much as I have. So with that being said, as I was saying to you, Eric, I'm sort of in a very anxiety ridden time now because mm -hmm. I'm st we're starting to come out of the pandemic. Things are starting to lift. Restrictions are lifting. And now I'm realizing right. that my old life is not necessarily the same life that I want to live anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I want to necessarily cut everybody out of my life, but the way I lived it before is not something that is that interesting to me anymore. I, I've sort of become mm -hmm. a different person. And so for me, a reader, I really like Todd, I really would look for somebody who really can give me guidance and can understand that transition that I'm going through because Mm -hmm. I don't understand what I'm going through sometimes. So for me to have somebody who can help guide me and help me to understand where I am and what choices I might need to make and, and understand that would be amazing to me. Mm -hmm. I, totally yeah, understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was, there are a lot of tarot readers out there. There are a lot of psychics, self declared psychics mm -hmm. too. It's like, we were talking about the ratios, 80, 20. I was thinking that 20% might even be split to 50, 50. So that's 10% of 10% of um, say 10% of the more intuitive ones, the 10% of the more psychic ones. There are authentic psychics there that are, that'll baffle you. You go, Oh my God, I just met you today. As in literally, they will tell you from head to toe what you're all about, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're the type of people who would help you with your mental and emotional health. They'll just tell you, oh, this is just about to happen. You know, you get, you're going to get a car crash next month. When? Oh, exactly on the 15th. Then you go, what? That's it. They'll just tell you. Then pay up. That's it. There are ones that are very scientific. There are tar tarot police out there saying, oh, that's not what that card means. You're wrong. And those are honestly one of the worst kinds. Seriously, they just tell you, this is what the Golden Dawn meant. And this is what Ryder Wade Smith is. What you're saying is wrong. You are a fake. There are terror readers like that out there. So negative, right? right? The biggest chunk that I can give you that you will encounter out, out there are a lot of passive aggressive terror readers. What are they? The ones I would say love and light, but deep down inside them, they go, please go away because I want to spend time on my own. And you know, you're wasting my energy right. and stuff unless you pay me. So there are terror readers like that out there, unfortunately. Right. So the ones that would fit people generally based on my experience are the ones that have very good balance between the real world and the spiritual world. The ones that consider your emotional health, your mental health, they're willing to listen. Start. They would start by listening. Some clients that I have just literally just talk the whole session and they just need someone to be uh, someone to listen to them. Mm -hmm. And it's very healthy for them. It really uplifts them. And I tell them, the I highlight the good things about people and tell them that, you know what? It's not as bad as it looks. You are the one that's emphasizing the negative things that are happening in your life. Like Einstein said, in every difficulty lies opportunity. Don't look at me when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, and it's, it's interesting considering Einstein is a scientist and he's, I sense his spirit being very spiritual and very yeah. in touch with, you know, the personal aspect of a human being. He's very human. Well, he's no longer here. He's in the spiritual realm. But another saying that he has is life is only worth living if you're living it for someone else. So I couldn't believe it was Einstein. Those were Einstein's words. So my whole, the whole point of what I'm saying here is, and the reason why I'm asking you guys those two pieces is, I honestly want to address to the world that choose the right tarot reader for you, not the ones that ride um, 
that that seem very believable because they use your own questions and your own statements they harness those information and they make you believe that it's that it's their own that's coming from them it's a trick unfortunately there are a lot of there are a lot of con artists out there how do you know who are the real ones follow your, listen to your heart listen to your intuition you can immediately sense a person if he or she is fake trust me as a as a normal human being you go well, i think this guy is like making fun of me or just trying to dazzle me Seriously, they would just end up selling you candles that would make you feel better and say, hey, you know what? You need to buy this for $500. By tomorrow, you'd be a millionaire. Yeah. Seriously. Um, so, yeah, it's, again, focus on the tarot readers that are willing to listen to you. Would give you recommendations. Like what you said, Sandy, where am I going? That is willing to give you a roadmap and next steps as to how to improve your life. Tarot readers can be very good counselors, but a lot of tarot readers can definitely lead you astray and make you feel unstable. It's the honest to goodness truth. That's a great word that you used, Eric, counselors, because I think people have an innate um, want or need to talk to someone about Mm -hmm. their life or their situation. Believe me, as empaths, we all know that. And so Mm -hmm. as, as a reader... I guess you do really take on, and I'll, I'm, I'll be the first to admit, when I have a reader, and when I go to a reader, I want to have a real conversation because I think mm-hmm. that that's how you really learn about yourself, about the path that you're on, what direction you might want to go in, you know, is having that genuine back and forth. I don't want to go to a tarot reader who sits there and goes, boom, 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 boom okay, thanks for coming. I'll take X amount of money from you. Mm-hmm. I, I want somebody who is there and genuine who I can talk to. Precisely. But you also consider yourself more of a healer than a tarot reader. Like the tarot is there, but it's also almost secondary to the, the healing. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the yeah. healing and the counseling and the listening and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tarot, again, I would emphasize tarot is not evil. It is a tool. The user may be evil. I'm not denying the fact, again, going back to our fir- the first time that I've been um, a guest, there are tarot readers that use tarot to literally curse people. Seriously. There are dark cards in tarot because in life there's light and dark. But the whole thing is tarot. I use tarot as my icebreaker, to be honest with everyone. I, I started off and whatever I see, I'll share it with you. And if I end up seeing the part, an aspect of the future and I go, wow, this stands out, get ready. I'll tell you honestly. But a lot of other readers would go, this is what this card, I'm, I'm impressed by the other readers that would say, this is what this card literally means and educates you what this, what the spread is all about and tells you what, what he or she would foresee for you. Those are the very impressive ones and very genuine ones because they know they start with the fundamentals they use their own life experience. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm in my forties and I use my own life experience to, you know, explain to other people what they're go, what, whatever you guys are going through. I'd be more than happy to listen and tell you, okay, I had a similar experience in the past and this is how I dealt with it. Instead of other tarot readers, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do that. No, that's, that's not the thing. I will tell you, this is what I did in the past and it worked for me. What do you think? I want to hear your thoughts. It's always a two-way street. It's a it's a two-way relationship. That's how I build um, tarot readers and querents type of relationships. It's it's you're right, Sandy. There are readers out there that are like boom. You know what? This is all I have to say. No questions. By give me five hundred dollars. Yeah. I keep saying five hundred dollars because I want five hundred dollars. Who, who's getting five hundred dollars? <laughs> Listen, I can read cards for that. Let's go. Nowhere, right? <laughs> Todd's doing cards yeah. next Tarot Tuesday. <laughs> That's right. And everybody's going to pay me too. None of this free stuff. No, Eric, is there anything, yeah. if somebody really wants to have a reading done now, I personally would mm-hmm. recommend our readers because I think you guys are amazing, but if somebody wants to go have their cards read and maybe they've never done it before, is there something specific mm-hmm. that they should look for in a reader uh, when they're really starting cold and they really don't know what they should look for or it's, I guess it's about, for me, the it's social media is everywhere. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing there is not every tarot reader would 
go out and do a live broadcast. No, not every, I mean, I'm, I'm personally, I personally was hesitating before I go, maybe should I, should I not do it? But I don't regret doing it because I kind of got discovered by a lot of yeah. people and I made a lot of friends. I made friends. You guys are amazing. Love you. Both of you. Yeah. So I would say follow your, your gut feel when you, it's like having friends. You can't just, you know, choose everybody and like, they'd be your friends for life. No, that's, that's not it. You're try to perceive your perception towards a person or a tarot reader plays a major role. Your are the, the first impression would go, okay, is this tarot reader calming me? Or is this tarot reader scaring the crap out of me? Or is this tarot reader stressing me out? Of course you won't cho- choose the one that's stressing you out. You, I would say that if you are going to choose a tarot reader, choose the ones that make you feel better the words that they say and um there it's kind of it's still a balance i would like to focus on the word balance here because some of them are overly pleasant that it's unrealistic right. it's very very unrealistic unfortunately i i love the positivity but then if they tell you you know what everything's going to be okay but the thing is it's not okay choose the ones that would tell you the truth. Like if you go random reading and you know what, this your, your boyfriend or girlfriend is never coming back. It's never easy to deliver that. You choose the ones uh, that you feel that are very, very honest and true. And it's not easy to detect no, that. No, and, and it's funny no, you say that no. because I agree. You know, I don't want somebody who's going to be all love and light all the time because that's not what I'm mm-hmm. there for. I'm there to sort of, I want the truth. I don't want just, oh, love and light. Everything's going to be rosy because to me, that's not helping me. What I need is the truth. So. So where do you find your solace? So when you go into a day and you go to micromanager of the year (laughs) and you work, you work with that person all day and then you come home and you've got, you know, the, uh, the Todd Michaels of the world going, woe is me. (laughs) Oh, my life is so sucky. Where, where does Eric go to, uh, rejuvenate and get some guidance for him. My faith is very strong. I am always going to be Catholic. I am. I know that there are a lot of people with different religions, and highly respect that. I always have. I always have this comfort at the end of the day that God has my back, and He's never failed me once. I've experienced so many things in this life to reach this point that I'm able to help other people. So what do I do? Yeah, sh- um, I unwind and I play a lot of video games. I will tell you guys that I, w- I confess I play a lot of Splatoon too. If you guys are playing Nintendo Switch, <laughs> you know what? Hit me up, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I'm not just a tarot reader. I play a lot of video games. I still do my um, some yoga. A lot of um, I still do my physical um, activities, and uh, I would say it's just that if you're going to ask me if there. My suggestion is you must have a person, your person that you can speak to at any, speak with at any time. Like they would drop everything just for you, just to talk to you in in five minutes. And honestly, I pride myself of being that person. And I think Todd, you can attest to that. Whenever you need to, you, when you, whenever you reach out to me, give me two minutes. I respond to your messages. I do. Right. And then usually it's a, uh, Hey, bug off. You, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, honestly, there's been times when I've kind of going through something and he actually reaches out to me. Zeke actually has a question. <laughs> yeah. Zeke actually has a question. He says he always feels awkward telling a client when something bad pops up in the cards. Can you give him advice on how to deliver that the That's easiest way? Question. First, tell the truth. This is what these cards mean. But what's important is this is what's your impression. You know, you, it, it 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 it's an art to deliver bad news in a graceful way and i'd be more than happy to um you know get in touch with you i'll i'll share my best practices with you but the biggest thing that i can tell everyone is your if it's a face to face you know what you're it's okay to be transparent but if it's scary to the point where you're going you think that you're going to make your queer uncomfortable you have to introduce the fact that you know Oh, this is what I say. You pulled up the worst cards ever, like the Ten of Swords, the Nine of Swords, then death. Then how are you supposed to explain that? I go, um, okay. 
I will tell them that it was, it's, <laughs> it's been nice knowing like, you. Who, Sayonara. Uh, can you pay up front? <laughs> and it also depends on the question, actually. Hopefully it's not a health question. Right. So right. say, okay, what about my relationship? Then I go Ten of Swords, Nine of Swords, Death Card. I will explain to that um, person or my client and say, I will not I, I will not be I, I'll be very blunt with you. These are dark cards. These are very dark cards. And this is what you're experiencing. The swords are represents the mind. And you've been thinking about so many things and it's affecting your health. Your your anxiety is shooting up. Apparently the nine of swords is showing that. The death card, however, I can tell you is good news. Even if it's a dark card, it may be the end of your anxiety. It may be the end of bad things. It may be the end of your relationship. But the whole point is you have the opportunity to rebuild, to start anew. You know what? You see the sun. You see the sun in this illustration. And, you know, do you focus on darkness versus the light? Do you focus on endings versus beginnings? You need, when you fall, do you just stay on the ground or do you decide to stand up? It's all your decision. It's all about you. You have the capacity and energy to survive this long. You even met me today that you have so much energy that you decided to reach out to me and you're fighting back. So these cards represent your new beginning. So in, in other words, that delivery, I mean, I actually kind of send, <laughs> delivered a reading right now. Whoever you are out there, that's what I'm feeling. <laughs> Those are the cards that I that pulled up. Oh my God. Head. It's me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all about the new beginning. That's what you need to do. It, so, so let me ask you this. So you get those cards and let's say, let's say you're doing a reading for me and you get uh, the swords and the swords mm-hmm. and the death. The swords um, and the swords and the you, death. Yeah. Wasn't it, wasn't it 10 and 9 and death, death, right? Yeah. Um, I got to break it down simple terms for people like me. Cause I just, I don't think that way. So do I have the ability to change that outcome? If I change the way I present myself, change the situation I'm in with, with little things, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Like, can I change that? That's not set in stone all the time, right? No. Um, one thing I can tell you is for every, here's, it, that's a strong, very strong and interesting question. For every tarot reading that you will have, it revolves around your present situation. That, that's one thing I can be absolutely, uh, I can be absolutely certain. It revolves around your present situation. The question is, what are you willing to do to change your present situation to build a better future? That's a whole that's a whole deal. So there are inevitable elements within that reading. And a very good tarot reader will tell you this is going to happen. And you need to address these pieces right now. And this is your recommended roadmap to your personal success. So you want to change the outcome of that negative thing that's about to happen? Okay, listen to that tarot reader saying, okay, this is what you need to do. Sleep better, eat better, try to make peace with other people, um, stop overthinking things, stop smoking, stop eating too much pork. Isn't all of this? Then you go, wait a minute, I could have just done that on my own, but did you do it? Why did it have to have a tarot reader tell you? Why did we have to find out for you intuitively? Dad, stop eating pork. Well, some people. I don't. I, I don't really. <laughs> I don't really go down no. that road. Yeah. <laughs> but I. But I am sitting. There, but I am sitting there going as he's going. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. I'm going. <laughs> you know, like. But that's. It's but you know what? Show. That's what I love about tarot. Is it is fluid. It's very fluid. You actually asked mm-hmm. a question. I was going to ask a, a little differently, but kind of the same idea is. Probably better. Yeah. If I if I were to go to you next week, if I go to you tomorrow, Eric, and then I go to you next week, my reading might be completely different based on the choices that I make. Your actions. Time. Right. Absolutely. Right. So, um, what I usually tell my clients is tarot readings are divine intel. So, yes, you get that advanced information, but what are you going to do with that information? Did Ignore it. Sure. That's yours. But I would suggest that you take it with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm all the time you go what if and it's in the back of your mind you go this is what eric said that you know something's about to end things good things are coming would you like to invite the good things and do something about it to make it faster to expedite it it's up to you it's all up to you say i say oh there's money coming 
then you go, oh, because it's payday. But the thing is, what if you get a bonus because you worked harder than before? If you're in the sales on the, you're on the sales side, you started selling more, um, you've done more in the real estate, it's all on you. The, our role is to guide you. Again, I keep saying roadmap. It's us providing you, the process stay, uh, would stay as we would explain the divine intel and give you at least a, a good level of direction for you to think about. We would never tell you what to do, but I'll tell you what I see and I'll tell you what I'm, mm-hmm. what I saw that looks like this is about to happen. Then it's up to you. Take it with a grain of salt. We're going to uh, invite you at uh, right now. In fact, if you'd like to have a quick card reading with Eric, please let us know in the comments right now. We'll let a couple of those build up and we'll get to it. Mm-hmm. Um, have you ever done group healing sessions? Mm, I've done like for two people, but not really a huge group. No, not, okay. not, not as a huge group. Um, and your question that resonated in my head is how do you keep that energy, Eric? Oh, it's, it takes a lot of practice. <laughs> so people absorb so much energy from me. Even now, I'm sure I am sharing my energy with both of you because I think after our offline discussion, there, there's some small level of clarity that you guys receive from me. I'm sure that yeah. I planted those seeds in your brain. So you go, okay. Mm-hmm. I- mm-hmm. Yeah, because if I had to deal with people like uh, you deal with people, um, I'd be out back digging graves <laughs> for all the bodies that I needed to get rid of. I'm not lying. I mean, not, I'm just being honest but, about it. But I will say this. <clears throat> every time that we spend together, Eric, and I mean this truly, is this calming energy comes over me. I always feel this calming energy and you're right. There is clarity that comes. I'll tell you what you want. You want a you want a good time. Uh, Get a healing Uh, session with him. It will be the most relaxing thing you've ever gone through. I may have to. Oh, Oh, we're we're turning British now, aren't we? And a little Jimmy Stewart thrown in there too. And a Jimmy Stewart talks like this. (laughs) I need to get healed here by Eric. If he's going to play that little bowl thing, it's going to ring. I still have it. <laughs> do, you, do you have it tonight? Because I could listen to that son of a bitch. <laughs> a couple of ways to get in touch with Eric. There's all of his social media, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, his website is uh, also... There it is. PositiveTarotWisdom.com. You could book a session with him. If you want to reach out, you can find him on Facebook or whatever. Um, and just send him a message and, and you know, talk with him and set up a session and do tarot, do, do a healing. Mm-hmm. I, again, I'll say the healing was, was amazing. It came through at just the right time for me. Sometimes he's naked. Sometimes he's clothed. I believe that time he actually had clothing on. You know, one of my favorite parts about having Eric Ferdinand Backlet on the Sandy and Todd cast on our live cast is watching you work really hard to get him as embarrassed and uncomfortable and awkward as you possibly can. I don't have to work hard. I I don't have to work hard. You know, all you have to say is a couple of words to him and he blushes. It's funny. He'll just be like, Todd. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. I love him. I love that man. I miss him. We need him back. Season three, we'll have more Eric for Nan Backlit. That's for yeah. sure. I think uh, focusing on on those folks and letting them shine a little bit and putting the spotlight on them so that they can grow what they're doing is very, very important to what we do here. I think so, too. And I'm looking forward to season three. My sister is going to be on. She's going to be doing that uh, that instructional uh, piece for people and their pendulums, which yeah. I have not been able to do. I- uh, I have one. I don't understand it very much. I'm very much looking forward to it. We even mentioned it the other night on our live cast and people are very interested in purchasing pendulums to be ready for Vicky to come on and share that information with us. So everybody you actually, excited about it. You posted something on our Facebook page about it. So if you want more details on where you can buy one, you can certainly do that. If you have yeah. kind of a metaphysical store in your area and it's a local shop, you can go in and pick one out there as well. They should know what they're all about and maybe even give you a little bit of information, but we'll have Vicky on to uh to discuss that. And And the important thing is to choose one that really calls to you whether you like the color more than others, you know, Whatever it happens to be, you choose something that really stands out and calls to you. Yeah, it almost chooses you, to be honest. So we'll we'll talk more about that in season three. 
And, um, and then I want her to talk about Reiki and all that kind of stuff. The things Mm -hmm. that have changed her life. She did some, um, I think she did some Reiki from afar on me and she cleared some lives and I don't want to go into it on the podcast, but some of the people I've been in my life, pretty interesting. I can't wait to hear about this because this is the first time I'm hearing about this. So yeah, I, I haven't shared it with story. anybody. I haven't shared it with this anybody. Is great. So this is great. At so any looking rate, looking forward to it. And in just a few weeks, I will be out there with you in Wisconsin. Really looking forward to that. We might go live. I think we talked about it the other day. A few spots we might go live together. So uh, be watching for that on our Facebook page, the Sandy and Toddcast. And please join our group. Stay Weirdos, Friends of the Sandy and Toddcast, because a lot of stuff goes on in that group that we might not necessarily share on our regular Facebook page. So if you join the group, it's a safe haven for everybody to hang out, be who they are without any judgment. And it's a great place to be. I think the weekend that you're here, that will be our live cast for those weeks. Like, I think we'll, we'll save the week before and the week after for the most part. And just do several live casts like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that be it. I think that will be really cool. It'll okay. be so much fun. And I think everybody will enjoy it because here we are, like, with each other. That's going to be crazy. But make so. sure and take extra Advil that weekend. All <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's going to wrap it up for the Sandy and Todd cast season two. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. We have. And until season three, I will just say Bye. Bye. How long it takes, I don't know. In the end, it ain't about the pace. It always ends the crossroads.